We are Aspire, the rocketry team of the University of Western Macedonia. We are a student-run organization with more than 50 members. Said members are all undergraduate students from different curriculums, including mechanical, chemical and electrical engineering. The team currently has two active rocketry projects and has already competed and won in Kansas in Greece, with plans to take part in the worldwide Kansas competition. As this is the first time Aspires enters the Spaceport America Cup, we decided to compete using a student research and develop solid engine, with 3000 feet being the targeted apogee while carrying 8.8 pounds dummy payload. The project's team is composed of 37 people and is divided into three subteams. Three of them, propulsion, construction, and avionics, are focused on the technical parts, which will be later analyzed in greater detail, and the promotion subteam, managing the financial aspect of the project. Python was organized and overseen by the project manager, while the lead safety engineer made sure all designing aspects were according to the TRA standards. Because of the unprecedented circumstances caused by the COVID-19 outbreak, our team was unable to physically meet in one place and work, with many members unable to even approach the city of Kozani, where Aspire is headquartered. To substitute that, a number of online solutions were used. Slack was utilized for instant messaging across all Teams projects in conjunction with Google Meet for real-time communication. In addition to those, 4 minutes and Google Calendar were used for planning our meetings and making sure they do not exceed the necessary time. Finally, all documentation was written and stored online using Google Drive and Google Docs. The team's transition to online means, even though it proved quite difficult for some members, was necessary and fruitful, as it produced the expected result since the team was able to submit the final report in time. The Propulsion subteam is responsible for designing, manufacturing and testing the motor. In the Python project, the motor is student research and develop, m class and thermally insulated with EPDM and Kevlar. All motor parts were designed using SOLIDWORKS. In addition, the subteam prepares the fuel which consists of 65% potassium nitrate and 35% dextrose. A flight simulator developed by the Propulsion subteam is used to optimize the development of the solid propellant of the motor using MATLAB and a graphical tool based on the Java Solid Rocket Motor computation model. Subsequently, the team is responsible for designing and organizing the static test of the engine to confirm the theoretical analysis that were conducted. The first step in the preparation of the propellant is to weigh the dextrose and the potassium nitrate. After that, we grind the potassium nitrate to a fine texture. This may easily be done with the use of an electric cough grinder. The accurate duration is decided depending on how finely the potassium nitrate is to be milled. After individually weighing the two ingredients, they are blended together in a single container. Complete mixing of the two is necessary for optimum and consistent performance. Next, it is necessary to weigh the mixture in order to divide it into equal quantities. The casting process involves heating the powered mixture until it becomes molten and then casting into a mold to produce the propellant grain of the desired shape. The required temperature that the mixture must attain is just above the melting point of dextrose. 
Heating the mixture is done using a thermostatically controlled electric induction stove. During this process, it is essential to use an infrared thermometer in order to monitor the temperature. Once it is completed, the remaining powdered mix is added. The initial color of the melted slurry is nearly colorless, but it begins to turn into an off-white color as light caramelization commences. It is then allowed to flow into the mold. The casting operation is now complete. The mixture is then allowed to cool and harden. The ignition system is the mechanism used to fire up the engine. The system is designed to offer a high level of safety, which is achieved by incorporating four consecutive switches in the launch control console. A 12 volt battery provides power for the first three security levels in the launch control console. The two first layers include two mechanical switches, which we must turn on in order to proceed. Afterwards, we arm the system by unlocking a final key switch. Subsequently, the pad box that contains an ESB 12V relay and a 6V battery constitutes the last layer of security. It should be mentioned that all levels of control are, are accompanied by LEDs indicating the system state. When the rocket is ready for liftoff, we must press a button in order to send an electrical signal to the relay which closes the second circuit. The Nichrome wire is connected with a pad box and placed inside the pyrogen igniter which is located in the combustion chamber. Only then does the wire fire up the engine. Having all received data stored in a database allows for extended flexibility on how we are able to manipulate them from here on. While in the database, the data get organized into tables with timestamps and can easily be exported to any form for reporting. The database we use is open source and SQL based, taking as input all the data gathered from the Astrid Avionics and outputting them to a custom graphical user interface application through TCP IP. This client application given the fact that it is web-based, may be viewed from any platform or device. The data will be accessible in real-time using the aforementioned database and sub-teams may focus on a specific set of data according to their interest or they can view them all at the same time. The web GUI can be accessed from all PCs, tablets and phones being on the same local area network. The data will be automatically organized and exported to an XML file for later review either on the existing application by clicking a replay button or on any other software fitted to read the former and reproduce the flight stats. This web app will also have the ability to freeze on a specific attribute for evaluation on live telemetry and save a picture from the sub-window that corresponds to that attribute without the need to go into replay mode. The construction subteam was responsible for the analysis, CAD designs and manufacturing of the rocket as a whole. As the design involved numerous problems with varying degrees of difficulty, especially in the fields of material properties, aerodynamics and flight performance, as well as the recovery of the rocket, it was deemed necessary for the subteam to be further divided into three departments in accordance to the fields mentioned before, namely structural department, aerodynamics department and recovery departments. As the word implies, the Department of Aerodynamics was tasked with analyzing the way the rocket interacts with the air. Our responsibilities range from analyzing the way the air flows around the rocket to its behavior during flight and can be organized under two major labels, namely aerodynamic design and flight performance. By applying the knowledge of aerodynamics, we were able to design the external geometries in an aerodynamically efficient way. We worked on the optimum shape for the nose the shape and number of fins to be used and decided that the addition of a boat tail was needed to further reduce drag. Also, more in-depth analysis was conducted by the means of CFD, which was essential to better understand the aerodynamics of the rocket. It also helped us make some crucial design decisions, like the optimum fin cross-section to be used, which turned out to give us a significant decrease in overall drag. Of course, since the rocket is designed to perform flight, it is absolutely crucial that it will do so in a safe and stable fashion. For that reason, 
the Department of Aerodynamics was responsible for analyzing and configuring the flight performance to ensure that the rocket achieves the required apogee while also remaining stable throughout the flight, adhering to the competition's rules. This was done by simulating the flight using open rocket in different settings and configurations to find the optimal design. Overall, we remain optimistic for what the future holds and look forward to the even more innovative and complex projects that are to come. The role of the recovery subteam is the safe and controlled return of the rocket on the ground. Precisely, the subteam is responsible for the correct placement of the parts in order to achieve the desired center of mass, the ejection of the nose cone, the deployment of the parachutes, and the optimal descent velocity of the rocket. The ejection of the nose cone occurs at apogee when a vault like mechanism is activated and the compressed springs which are placed on the upper recovery ring, is the nose cone. This type of mechanism, while challenging to design, was chosen mainly because it eliminates the dangers that accompany the use of carbon dioxide canisters and black powder. After the nose ejection, the drop parachute gets deployed, which is confirmed with the help of four photoresistors placed inside the nose. The drop parachute is handmade, consisting of eight cores, it is hemisphere in shape and has a diameter of 22 inches. At 1500 feet, with the release of the two three link systems, the drog, which is linked to the main parachute's deployment bank, will deploy it. The main parachute is toroidal shaped, it has 12 cores and its diameter is 84 inches. The three link system was the best choice for the main's deployment because of its small size and the minimum force required for its release. Since this is the first time our team designs a rocket, there is definitely room for improvement as a non-conventional mechanism has been chosen for the nose release. Despite that, the performance of the system is efficient and the team has faith in it. Here in the structural department, we are tasked with amassing the vision of each sub-team and then materializing while staying true to the original goal. A depictive example of our work is designing testing and constructing the overall internal skeleton in order to withstand any potential load that may develop in any stage of flight. But by far, the greatest challenge for us was to augment our rudimental aerodynamic study into a full-fledged design with the further addition of the aforementioned inner skeleton. This was accomplished by making sure that the center of mass of our primitive aerodynamic model will coincide with the structural designs we created later. A problem which was solved by accurately distributing the weight of our subsystems. Subsequently, we performed a finite element analysis on each and every part of Python in order to evaluate the structural integrity of the overall assembly and cross-checked it throughout multiple softwares. Ultimately, adhering to our visionary stance, we remain committed and passionate for the upcoming projects where we aim to, for to further optimize our designs. 2020 was an unprecedented year for all of us. A global pandemic was certainly out of the list of setbacks anticipated and required a lot of time even for considering whether we should take part in the competition in the first place. So, to make the rest of the process as effortless as possible for old as well as new team members, great effort was put into the creation of a solid team structure, making sure that every member knows where to turn if problems arise. The project is spearheaded by the project manager, who makes sure that all subteams are able to work together and interact without tensions, whilst making sure that they all stay on track and have their deliverables ready in time. Coordinating and managing a large team is challenging on its own, but if this year has proven anything to anyone, it is that the project manager has to be prepared for the most unexpected of scenarios to prevent the team from falling apart. The subteam managers played an integral role in this part, by making sure each and every one of the team members were committed and ready to do the work according to the manager's direction. Having to deal with the current pandemic, as well as the usual difficulty of a mission like this for the first time, provided an unprecedented experience for all of us. The first challenge presented was the need for remote work, something that most of us were unaccustomed to. After finding the right tools for communicating remotely, it became apparent that the greatest challenge would be the way to substitute physical access to university labs and infrastructure. Getting around the required significant help from mentors as well as the university professors. After almost 7 months of lockdowns, we managed to return to the labs but with extremely limited time until the final document was through. This proved very challenging, especially for the propulsion and the construction subteams that were forced to practically implement what they had been theoretically researching for months. 
However, with hard work and deep belief in the project, we were able to produce a result that we're all proud of.